and this is Kevin Button, and this is Tanya, and we'd just like to say thanks for, thanks for a great night. Excellent, excellent. Can't be repeated. Just cannot be repeated. Catch up with a few people on Oh, heaps of people, yeah. There's my wife. Lots of people I've, I've forgotten about, and it's uh, great, to, great to catch up. Excellent. There were so many moments that brought tears to your eyes. Tears of laughter, tears of sadness, and tears of pure joy. Fantastic. From uh, last night's uh, gala dinner with 1,184 people, we're now at Raymond's today, enjoying ourselves, recovering from last night. And tomorrow we've got um, a trip down to Stirling, and then uh, we finish at the Gloucester Park on Friday evening. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. No Welcome worries. to Willow Ponds. Enjoy yourself, mate. I didn't have the chance to, uh, to drink last night. I was too busy talking. <laughs> Got to reach $65. Oh, yeah. Basically, if your name gets called out, come up and pick out whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. You never get cataracts. Jim Berridge. Uh, I'm over here from the first intake of, uh, of JR's at Lewin in 1960, and I finally caught up with a few fellows that uh, I haven't seen for nearly 50 years. So it's been a revelation to me, and uh, the functions that we've uh, attended, especially last night at the uh, Burswood Casino, uh, where there was 1,200 people uh, involved, uh, was absolutely fantastic. We heard, heard about the uh, Cook and JR's reunion on the internet uh, a couple of years ago the planning started and the money started saving we flew over last Thursday to Perth from Brisbane direct uh, and attended the Cook's reunion for three days before venturing into the junior recruits reunion thereafter and um, so far we've enjoyed every function we've been at Uh, we're from northern New South Wales, a place called Evans Head, which is near uh, Ballina on the far north coast. Uh, I'm glad that I made the big trip across to the uh, Golden West. So I've caught up with young Jim over there and uh, Jerry. Uh, the three of us, plus a couple of others, uh, jumped on the train in uh, Brisbane 50 years ago and uh, took us a week, and that's seven days in uh, normal language, to get across here to uh, West Australia and uh, to start our big adventure. What a big adventure it was too for uh, young kids uh, when you think we're only 15 and a half years of age, straight out of school and the big wild world was in front of us. So. Uh, here we are, 50 years later, uh, we caught up with a lot of mates of ours and uh, it's good to see that, uh, well at least we're still alive, that's the main thing. But uh, no, the whole organisation that we've seen so far has been very, very good and uh, it's been a credit to the uh, organisers. I must make special mention to the uh, dedication of the uh, memorial down there at uh, Lewin Barracks. Uh, grown men do cry, I can tell you that. When we first joined the Navy, we tried to get into Narimba, which was the apprentice training establishment. And um, both went to Brisbane to do our exams, went back home, got our results, said, no, you didn't make it, but we have this new thing going, junior recruits, you're fully qualified. And that's where the ball started rolling. <laughs> Yeah, I, I went ahead and uh, finished, I'd done 20 years full-time service and then uh, by that age, I was 35 years of age, had uh, three young children and uh, I made the big break after 20 years to uh, give my children and my wife, I must admit, who has stuck by, <laughs> stuck by me for uh, 40 odd years and uh, I, you know, we, we let the kids grow up in a, in a solid environment but during that time, I, I was involved with the Navy Reserve for another 15 years anyway, so uh, 
we're still here and uh, I still do a bit of sea time on a 100 foot sauna scooter called the South Passage as a chef and uh, just to keep my eye in. You go, you're the senior. Oh, am I? Oh, okay. Yeah, Paul Whittaker, number 10 intake, 1965. Yeah, my name's Paul Cobb from Brisbane. Uh, I was in the 16th intake, ended up as a chief RP. Yeah, well, we're both RPs, in fact, so uh, we've got a lot in common. And, yeah, um, Paul ended up a two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we've been around for a long, long time. He's got to hold it against me for the rest of my life. <laughs> but um, it's been a great, great um, event. event. Everything's been re well organised. I've really thoroughly enjoyed myself. Oh, this, without doubt, you've got to thank the organising committee. Uh, they've gone out of their way so much to do this so perfect, in fact, uh, we couldn't fault it. Yeah. And I thought the uh, speeches at the uh, actual dedication ceremony were very relevant, as they were last night, indeed, at the gala dinner. And uh, all in all, this has just been such a fantastic success. We're only, I, I feel honoured to having attended it. Yeah. Even though it's cost a fortune, <laughs> I, I don't mind paying a fortune for this because I feel honoured having attended it. Uh, I joined uh, HMS Lewin in 30th of July, 1966. Um, was there for the 12 months, uh, went into naval stores, had a great time, it was uh, probably some of the best times of my life. And would I do it again? Bloody oath. Yeah, well I, uh, I was part of the 6th intake of January 1963, the same as these three guys, two guys. Um, it's interesting that um, uh, Dick and I are, uh, joined boats together, Glenn was in communications with me and uh, we uh, made some really long lasting friendships. Hopefully they'll go for a lifetime, mine longer than most I hope. Um, <laughs> would I do it again? I definitely, yeah, I definitely would do it again. Yeah, I'm Glenn Butler, I joined the same, in the same intake as, as Warren and uh, during that period of time that I was in the Navy, although I wasn't in there for the full term, I have to say that one of the things that sticks with me now is the camaraderie, but it also uh, put me instead for a very, very, I think, fulfilling life. And, uh, you know, would I do it again? Almost certainly, and I'd recommend anyone else that had thoughts of doing the same. Yeah, my name's Richard Lewin. I was a member of the sixth intake. We, uh, we had a lot of good fun, a lot of good times at Lewin, and uh, we left Lewin, and half, the half of our intake went to Melbourne, half, the other half went to Vampire, and, uh, from there, I went into submarines, spent 16 years in submarines, had a ball, learnt a lot. Would I do it again? Definitely. It was uh, it just amazed me that they were able to, you know, it's sort of a very humbling experience, really, because, uh, you know, when, when you saw the amount of JRs, the people that you looked at around, and all the people that had done well out of that, that group of people, uh, it's just amazing. I think there was 13,000 that joined. Yep and 10,000 graduated, so, and all those people that were there yesterday, it's, it's obvious that they've done pretty well in life. Red ticket, Alpha 45. Yep, yep come on down. Four, five, Another six, green ticket, Alpha yeah. 59. Next one, blue ticket, Bravo 63. Dave Shine from uh, from uh, the 18th intake, January 67, joined on my mother's birthday. And uh, I think what uh, Russ Chalmers said last night was uh, it gave me an education, which I was failing badly at school. So it gave me uh, quite a leg up. Uh, the Navy, it gave me 22 years worth of grounding and it suits me really well in uh, civilian life. Which is now doing more time away as a civilian than I have done in the Navy. Yeah, Mick Carey uh, joined uh, January 10, 1961. Enjoyed hell out of it. Um, I'd still be in there if, uh, if I had the chance. Had a lot of good, uh, lot of good times, a lot of good mates, uh, met a lot of nice people. Uh, Travelled and enjoyed hell out of it. Uh, marvellous, uh, marvellous experience. Um, would I do it again? At the drop of a uh, hat, I'll be right in there. Wonderful, wonderful, and it's good for the wives too because we've met people that we haven't seen for 40 years, one said yesterday. So, um, yeah, I'm enjoying it, and the food was lovely last night, and the speeches were good. Yeah. 
and I'm the better half of him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, Jeff Wake and Rick Avey. Rick Avey, yep. Seventh, seventh intake, intake. Um, mm -hmm. July 63. One of our um, claim to fame was one of our smallest members of Nakina too. We put him in his sea bag, hung him on the line, and we subsequently went and did out all our things. And uh, unfortunately, he stayed in his sea bag all day. All till, day. Till the divisional <laughs> people found him. <laughs> And we all got in the shit. Mm. Would we do it again? We Bloody definitely oath. would. Yeah. Oh, Jen, how are you, love? Oh, well, thank you. No, I haven't had time. Yeah, well, we're going down to Sterling, have a look through. I haven't been down there for years, so uh, be nice to uh, see I've what's down there. there. You've never been there? No. <laughs> Could be interesting. I was in the first intake, and uh, it's been 50 years since I've seen all of these guys, and we've had a great time. We're going to the um, naval base today on Sterling, and it's on. Sorry, what island? Dunnall. Look, the programmers today has absolutely been fabulous. We've uh, thoroughly enjoyed the whole program, and we're really looking forward to the sterling trip today. Uh, welcome to the bus, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you enjoy your trip down to Stirling. It'll take us about an hour to get there. We've got uh, the Burswood and Langley Plaza people to pick up, and then we're on our way. Good morning, my name is Warren Officer John Scarf. I was an XJR, I joined the Navy back in January 1976. I was in the 54th intake at Lewin. But welcome to Garden Island. We're going to do a brief tour around the island, <laughs> showing you some of the different areas that we can have a look at, uh, where the ships are parked, the submarines, the new wharves, the different facilities that we have here to support the, both Army, Navy and Air Force. The get the crabs and uh, no. there's some fantastic fishing around the island. Yeah, when we came across, Bill, there was just a uh, civilian settlement. Oh, okay, yeah. And yeah. they had a uh, memorial sort of plaque there, I've got yep. the photograph of. Oh, okay. And we just yeah. had our tents alongside the settlement there, mate. Yeah, yeah. Rug it up and down the sand hill. Oh, it was, I <laughs> Uh, it was Henderson is where they do all the building of the ships over in this area here somewhere. Yes, a lot of them built over there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. A lot of the patrol boats, the new patrol boats are all built over here. Yeah. We used to see them roaring up and down the bay doing builders trials. Mm. Yeah. yeah, well when we started it off here, I was in the first intake, so yeah. when we began coming here, and there was a few shacks here and uh, the people actually who had moved back into this area, was a, the, the uh, government had formed this special air service and they began using this as a training ground and that's the place where we used to camp. Yeah, and it's still there. Yeah. Well, apparently, apparently it's so, been yeah. incorporated into the new depot, yeah. of course. Yeah. But we used to come and, over and... That's um, where we stayed and that's where the... Yeah, yeah we used to get the lead hand over and then you, we'd buy some, bring some food with us and our uh, mm. spear guns, catch crabs off the wharf, um, you know, all sorts of things. Great fun. OK, the building directly in front of us down here is the wardroom. Now we do have single accommodation up here. We a lot of quite a few single members living on the base while they're either undertaking training. There is accommodation for them. There is long-term accommodation for junior officers up through the hills on the left.
Uh, oh, it's a Japanese military helmet and bayonet. Uh, primary kind of bayonet used on Japanese rifles during World War II was the Type 30 introduced in 1897. Uh, yeah, but it was unusual that they, from what I remember of it, it's unusual that they found on the island and they weren't sure why it was, why it was buried there, whether uh, whether there was a there was one story where a Japanese sub might have been anchored outside of Garden Island and one of the crew members died and they buried him there. The other story was it had something to do with Z Force and they actually buried the Japanese soldier there. We had a look at the uh, car missiles at the Navy at the museum. I said, yeah, I used to sleep next to about ten of them. <laughs> <laughs> It's an high car, an ASW weapon system. It carries a torpedo. It's a 15-inch signal lamp, uh, which was used to communicate between ships, particularly during periods of radio silence, and send speed up to about 12 words a minute. A very efficient means of communicating between ships. In our initial training, um, uh, the first uh, six weeks there, um, all of us radio operators and signalmen were trained up to Morse to word, t read 12 words a minute. If we failed that, they were made a signalman. <laughs> Don't believe him for one moment. <laughs> <laughs> the signalmen were the cream of the well, they communications are now. world. There's no radio <laughs> operators <laughs> anymore. In front of us here, you're going to see. Oh, we do have two submarines in, the Anzacs in, and looks, I think it's the Orunta. We'll go straight in. Three. three submarines, is there? Oh, no, yep, there's side. one on the other side. We silently snuck in during the week. As they do. We'll come back down past the submarines in a minute, and we'll take a couple of minutes to let you jump off the bus so you can have a look at them a bit closer. Yeah, they're not the greatest. I wouldn't yeah. serve on them anyway. Don't put that on that bloody <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be awfully claustrophobic, oh, wouldn't it? Yeah. But the ships, on the other side the ships are different than when I was uh, yeah. in. Things change. A lot modern. This commemorative plaque, something by the Royal Australian Navy's 75th anniversary time capsule, ensconced in a concrete length. The capsule was placed by the commanding officer of HMAS Sterling, Captain A.B. Robinson, R.A.N., on Friday the 5th of September 1986. It should be raised and opened by the commanding officer of HMAS Sterling on the 10th of July 2011, the 100th anniversary of the R.A.N. So next year, July next year, we'll have to get the commanding officer of the base to, um, I'm sure it'll have a ceremony to unveil and pull out the time capsule that's been sunk down here. We have one of the members, he was actually the president of the Warren Office and Senior Sailors Mess and has got a letter inside that time capsule. So it'll be interesting to see you here next year. I'll still be here. And when we'll get the commanding officer then, we'll start arranging the ceremony to have it removed. We did have a slipway down on the left, but uh, since they took the last patrol boats, oh, about 10 years ago, I think it is now, up to Darwin, they removed the complete structure so we can't pull boats up and down any, any of the smaller craft out of the water. They do have a small ship lift that they can lift the fishing, the smaller DMO boats up. See, ladies and gents, we're very well rehearsed for today. We've changed the bracket about four times now. Never mind. Here's one you may remember from the Beach Boys and lots of other people over the years. Oh, we came on the sloop of John Lee, my grandfather and me, round Nassau town. Oh, uh -huh. 
I stuff the jumpy sail. See how the mainsail set. Send for the captain to show Let me go home. I wanna go home. Oh, I wanna go home. Oh, well, the ship's the worst trip I've ever been on. Now the first mate. Yeah, it's been an interesting tour. I have been here when I was in the Navy and just sort of helping out with uh, engine patrol boat changes. Um, things haven't changed much. It's just everything is well looked after and it's been a, um, a great tour and I've enjoyed every bit of this, uh, the whole trip. It's been worth, worth every penny of uh, the whole reunion. I stop the jumpy sail, see how the mainsail set, send for the captain to stay all let me go. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. I know it was only a quick once around the island very quickly, but hopefully you got an appreciation of just what that place has gone on to be from uh, your time when you were there probably many, many years ago. Leave me alone. Oh, I want to go home. Oh, well, I feel so broke up. Third day, as good as the first and second. Um, I'm still looking at uh, most of my boys of 50 years ago at age 15 and a half to 16 and a half, and they're uh, got come to realise that I am at least 10 years older than them, but it's been a great, great three days, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and glad I came. I want to go home. Oh, I want to go home. It was wonderful, yeah, to uh, meet up with some of the guys, especially on the last day, which is just, was just great. The um, and it was good because everybody's nice and relaxed now, and we've, we've had four days of it, so which is really good. Because this is for some of us, this is our last day, so we have to go back. You know, like I go, I live on the Gold Coast, so I'm leaving tomorrow at lunchtime. So, which makes it really good. So it's great. Good feed, good com companionship, and uh, just wonderful. Oh, 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 I've ever been on. <laughs> <laughs>
of um, which might be a hit and miss. <laughs> We're running mystery, mystery trifectas and quartets. Uh, the reason for the raffle tickets is that we'll randomly call them out so that people can then, once we've allocated money to the race, can turn around and uh, pick a favourite number, a jockey, or they like a the name of a horse, and that's what the money will go on. G'day, this is the bet, mate, this is the bet. <laughs> I got it from a mate. If you want a tip, it's off. <laughs> Uh, come back after race 10, all right? <laughs> Should have something for you. Don't let him see your tips. <laughs> well, uh, look, it's touch me toes. I reckon that uh, that's always the struggle now is touch me toes. So I think that's got to be the go for this race now. <laughs> it's good reading. I've got nothing else to do at the moment. <laughs> How about uh, Aussie Attack in the next? We go by colours, but there's no green ones in here this time. So one has to have another system. So you go by pretty uh, names. Pretty names, or maybe just pick a number and stick with it. Doesn't work though. Yeah. Oh, here's the video guy again. Yeah, you're back again, eh? Already. I said, haven't you taken the night off yet, Rex? <laughs> oh, it's the video guy again. <laughs> Oh, are you back again? Great to see you. Oh, I'm not here with the camera back again. Who's that video guy again, Mac? Who's that prick again with the video camera? Famous, famous. I'm losing. <laughs> I'll give you a tip, you can't win. Oh, mate, it's touch me toes is the one to go. I haven't seen me toes in 10 years, so this will be the one to do it.